Hello again, everyone. How's it going today? Happy Wednesday. We are back for some more uh, Lego building. Uh, this time I've got a couple uh, small sets to do. I also have some poly bags in case we uh, just kind of like get done pretty early. I don't know how long it'll actually take. There's not a whole lot of pieces in these. Uh, this is a three-in-one thing that I got from Walmart. It was on sale, so um, pretty decent sets in it. Um... Admittedly, two of which I already had, but it was on sale and a good uh, good deal. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. I've also n never seen them with a poly bag in them before, but I also haven't seen all of these uh, multi packs. So, you know. And then I have this other uh, three in one to do afterwards. But let's go ahead and put that back there, knock something off of our uh, D and D set. I guess I'll fix that on Friday. So, there we go. Chuck that. Uh, it was on sale a while ago. Um, and I actually heard from some other people that it, it either went out of stock real fast, uh, or they changed the sale or something like that, because uh, it sounded like some other people didn't didn't get them. Um, people in my local LEGO club, I should clarify. Alright, so, let's go ahead and put these aside for the moment. And we'll just uh, start with the little poly bag. A little uh, Easter bunny with colorful eggs. So how's everyone doing today? Get all of those poured out. Nope, nope, I feel a piece in there. There we go. Doing okay-ish? Hey, that's about me too. <laughs> These are uh, interesting uh, pieces. Quarter dome elements, fairly new. Kind of neat. Alright, let's go ahead and make our eggs first. I mean, still alive is good, and unless of course you're uh, GLaDOS. Alright, so let's make one egg here first with bright orange and then yellow. And then we have red. There we go. And that one was right there. So it is disgustingly warm where I am. Gives all the GLaDOS made fish cake. Um, I think I'll pass. Number one, the cake is a lie. Number two, fish? Ew. Gross. Alright, so we got our uh, little uh, Easter eggs there. A little bit late for Easter, but meh, whatever. A yeah, one by four double inverted uh, slope piece. You remember the thing where uh, Glados gives a uh, cake recipe and it's all fish stuff. <laughs> top piece. Now the interesting thing is that these uh, these quarter dome pieces are actually taller than the uh, these round end pieces. They fit in with these uh, these parts right here. So 
that's kind of interesting. There we go, and we give the uh, the bunny a very big tail here. So yeah, a very very big tail. And do a foot. that way. Oh, for anyone uh, looking for something fun to uh, watch, um, I noticed that uh, Netflix has uh, Top Secret, a very, very, very funny and just absolutely bonkers uh, movie from uh, 1984 by the people behind um, Airplane and Police Squad and Naked Gun series. It's really good. Just absolutely bonkers. I highly recommend it. Very much my kind of humor. I haven't watched Police Squad in a really long time. I should rewatch that. Howdy, Gnosis Doc. How's it going? Fine, you think. Um. Um. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess the fine part is good, but. <laughs> I'm a little worried about that uh, I think part. Uh, we are building a, a little Easter bunny right now. We got some other small sets to build afterwards. Just kind of doing some some nice little relaxing builds. Yeah, most of the rest aren't holiday. Uh, I think this was just what was available for the uh, the multi pack. I got a, a three-in-one uh, thing from Walmart that was on sale a little while ago. I think he's holding his uh, carrot. Something that I've been eating quite a few of lately. So a cute little uh, bunny eating a carrot there with uh, some Easter eggs. It's very cute, very simple. Really nice set. Um, this was actually a uh, gift with purchase at uh, um, Lego uh, last month. I think early last month or something. Um, and then we have spare parts, a pink one by one tile slope, a white one by one tile slope with eye printing, and a dark pink one by one cylinder plate. Go ahead and put those away. There we go. All right. Then let's dive into the uh, the next one. Also, kind of Easter related because the eggs are uh, are colorful. But, um, a little, uh, bird's nest. There we go. 
And let me switch on over to those instructions. There are the instructions there. So you got bag number one, two, two, three, and another one. And an eight by eight with round corners. All right, go ahead and put those up there. Howdy, Crimson Clover and Kinshire, how's it going? Yeah, this one's really cute. I'm looking forward to it. I like the uh, the little leaves on it and the little uh, flowers. I don't know, they make me think of azaleas. Something that my mother always had quite a lot of in her, uh, in her garden. Always does. I mean, she still does, so... <laughs> All right, let's see. So bag number one to build the birdie. And I like the uh, the orange on it. Doing okay? A lot of people just doing okay, and that is unfortunate. I mean, better okay than not okay, but... I like the, uh, the orange and the dark gray. Those are, those are a nice, uh, contrast, I think. Curious about the uh, the sand blue right there. Feels a little out of place, but then again, it also does give some extra definition. Here's our two by two slope there. Oh, for those who've been uh, watching the Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster, I did get the um, the Cursed Shield, uh, the curse on the uh, Cursed Shield broken. Pondering the start of a mail project. Neat. What kind of pondering? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what 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 it take what what goes into. Uh, <laughs> that kind of project. So I'm just curious. Alright, let's get some uh, one by one quarter cylinder tiles here. Yeah, I still need to do a lot of uh, uh, velt grinding uh, to get all of the uh, the rages. I should also try to even out levels on characters a bit. And his little beak. There we go. Get that right on there. Got a little birdie. Sans wings, of course. Considering if you have enough supplies to complete it, and if you need to order more, and what size you want it to be. Ah! Cool. I do get that. There's, uh, there's a lot of... Well, similar uh, ponderings when it comes to uh, Lego design. 
Is Gao a type of blue mage? No. No, I it's he's he's fairly unique within the uh the game. Um I would not put him as a blue mage or similar to. Uh I mean in in a loose sense, yeah, he's similar to. Um He's a type of gal. Howdy, Mad Martin. How's it going? I really am disappointed in, in Final Fantasy Tactics uh, Advance that the Blue Mages cannot learn from other Blue Mages. They have to only get it from the, um, the monster itself. And also, I have missed a monster. Like, at the point I'm in the game, the monster literally does not show up anymore. Saw my AD&D &D blog post, Illithid Noises? Indeed, I, I thought you might uh, get a kick out of that one. And there's still another deity to, uh, to work on, although he's dead, so... There we go. Get that little wing on there. I like the uh, the silver bit. No, oh, I already did that part. Uh, st goblin, the original goblin, the blue goblin. Um, they are they're only in like six missions. The spell Phantasmal Killer speaks to you. It's a it's a pretty fun spell. Um, like when it works, it's great. When it doesn't, uh, it's just disappointing, but, uh, it can certainly be fun. Howdy, Bats, how's it going? Sounds just like you. <laughs> Alright, so we got a little birdie, his little wings. Put them up in the air. They're very small wings, but it's fine. All right, so spare parts. We got a uh, dark gray one by one plate, orange one by one quarter cylinder tile, and a black one by one cylinder tile with eye print. Okay, and bags number two. There we go. Lots of flowers. Alright, start out with the uh, large plate. Get some side stud pieces. A lot of terrifying D&D spells and monsters. Oh yeah, especially if you go uh, back to 2nd edition. There are some... Uh, Real doozies back there. Some more side stud pieces. I mean, I've also had a lot of fun uh, coming up with uh, spells over the uh, over the years too. I calculated it once that uh, um, my project has increased the uh, the list of second edition priest spells by ten percent. Even if you take out the ones that are pretty much just slight modifications of other spells. 
Eh, so, uh, the ten tenth level don't really count. I mean, you, you can only do those in uh, Dark Sun or um, Arcane Age type thing. <laughs> a little a bit of lint on there. Get a 6x6 six six cylinder plate there. Get a little uh, bit of uh, plate surrounding the cylinder for the little recessed nest, which is pretty nice looking. I like I like how that comes out. All right, one by sixes with round uh, or curved slopes. We do two of these. Uh, I don't know of one like that in 2nd edition. Alright, get our little branch pieces over here. Not that I need more of these in brown, I got a lot of them from Pick-A-Brick. Alright. Get that on there, and get that on. I don't know that it matters, but it does have it turned around, so let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Making branching pathways? Nah, I'm just uh, sticking to the instructions. Okay, two one by one tiles here and here. All right, three one by twos with round ends. You also love the Stardew LP? Well, thank you. I'm glad. I have been having an absolute blast uh, with that, and it is really, really, really um, nice to just get away from real life and and uh, <laughs> not not deal with stuff by playing it. Leave the puns to uh, professionals and you. What if I don't want to? Two. Oh, I didn't. No, I didn't put one on there. Thought I did. Oh well. All right, get a leaf here. Yeah, another one with a light pink flower. Remember in a video I put some fruit trees in the greenhouse? Uh, yeah, that's coming. That's coming. Part of the problem with the, uh, the greenhouse I and trees is that um, the space around the, uh, uh, the trees have to be empty, so you need to be careful about uh, where you put your... Um, for sprinklers, so I was waiting on that until I got got things ready. All right, turn it back to the back. Let 
Looking out the basement windows, a bird has made her nest in your landscaping rocks underneath the deck. And she has some eggs. Can't wait till the little ones hatch. Aww. We have a little, um, like, S joint in, um, in a downspout. And there's basically, um, uh, some birds who nest there every year. Like, it's right in the corner between um, the main house and an addition, so it's, you know, it's in an outside corner and, and just, like, right in there kind of thing. So it's a great, great little place for a nest. Howdy, Ice Oven. How's it going? Of course, every time you go out the door by that that side, the whatever bird is there, the uh, male or female, flies off and away to, to watch you, and it's just like, I'm not going to do anything to your, your babies. You can stay there. It's a kill deer, so they don't uh, really make uh, up high. They actually nest on the ground, apparently, so you've been keeping uh, away till they hatch. Aw, nice. Yeah, around here we have robins that also, uh, I believe they are... They're ground nesters. I've never actually seen a robin's nest, I don't think. Although, I th think they have blue, blue eggs. Which are gorgeous, gorgeous eggs. Um, usually only see uh, the shells. My day has been okay. Not great. But okay. I do like robins. They're uh, they're rather pretty birds. And there are so many of them around here too. And I have still, to this day, never seen a Baltimore Oriole. Never seen a Baltimore Oriole. <laughs> they're supposed to be common. I think they're field birds, though. They have a lot of woodpeckers around, They and also bird of, birds of prey over the lake. It's pretty neat. Yeah, we have some uh, um, fun woodpeck woodpeckers. Um, like, two main types, a little one and a big one. I did have a uh, uh, Eastern Birds book, but I gave it to my mother. She's more into bird watching than me. You know where you can see some Baltimore Orioles? Not the sports team. I was talking about the ones named for Lord Baltimore. <laughs> oh, so close. <laughs> I knew where you were going. I knew where you were going. All right, get our mama birdie right here. There we go. All right, so spare parts. We got a brown one by one tile, a brown one by one cylinder plate with hollow stud, a brown uh, twig piece, a green three stem piece, green three leaf piece, and two one by one plate flowers in pink and dark pink. I may have left the door open for that one, Mad Martin, but I'm not walking through. Not walking through. <laughs> All right, 
start. Got an inverted one by three tile. Just Kool Aid Man through the wall. So something that I learned today, and, and this is relevant because I, uh, I used it uh, in the title of the stream, is that the, the word galore comes from uh, Irish. I did not know that. Some gigantic eyes on this bird here. Well, I guess it's probably not the eye itself. It's probably just part of the head. Now you can make it look up. But it also moves part of the head with it. <laughs> yep, from Irish. I don't know how long ago it came into English, though. Got a little birdie here. Let me put you right there. This part of the music sounds so Back to the Future. <laughs> That's why we're at this part now. A little one by one brick there. And this birdie has his beak open. Waiting for uh, mommy to come back with some uh, delicious, delicious wormies or other insect like food. have it looking up. The other one's looking down. This one can look up. Uh, no, this one This one is actually uh, um, an individual set. It is... Uh, it might not be still available on, on LEGO's website, but I think it is. It was as of uh, around Christmas time. The individual one. Even the uh, the poly bag, I think, is uh, available at places that actually sell poly bags. Um, I think I've heard that like Target has them and various other 
odd stores and stuff like that. One of the best things in your CK2 game, you have uh, one kingdom title to your name, but enough duchies to make a second custom one, and two duchies of another kingdom to make the uh, kingdom, but you're only going to keep the one kingdom title and let the rest drift into that kingdom. I do like letting things drift myself. His wings are down. Okay, let's go ahead and make the eggs. Well, the iron. Use the, the proper English term, iron. Okay, blue one goes right there. Green one goes back there. And red one goes right there. Okay. There we go. That one right there. All right, spare parts. We've got a, a bright orange one by one plate, a bright orange one by one tile slope, and a gold one by one cylinder tile with top pen peg. There we go. Nice little, uh, little spring birdies with some eggs, little, uh, little branch. Really does remind me of uh, azaleas. It really does remind me of azaleas. So, very, very cute. I like the orange and dark gray. I like the orange and dark gray. Which probably means that this is a... Uh, this is a... a um, the male bird? Because the female would probably be brown. There we go. Go ahead and put that one right there. And next up, we have the Magical Unicorn, three in one. We can also make a Magical Duck and a Magical Seahorse. We're, we're only going to make one, though. All right. We'll take a look at the instructions for the other two, though. Magical Duck, yeah. Not as magical as a duck bunny, but, you know, close enough. What about a duck bear? Uh, no, no. You gotta, gotta have the owl bear instead. You adore seahorses? Awesome. What about sea dragons? Which are related. It's still so bizarre that they're actually fish. All right, let's start there. You don't love my cousins. Well, they're not related to me. They're fish. They're related to seahorses. They're basically seahorses, but more elaborate. But they're dragons. Well, they're, they're just called dragons. Komodo dragons aren't actual dragons either. Those are just lizards. I mean, they're cousins in the same way that uh, they're your cousins, too, by uh, having everything be uh, related to each other. Yeah, um, it's a sea creature of some sort. Whether it's a fish, or a whale, or some other, you know, just completely mythological uh, sea monster, hard to say.
without being able to talk to the people involved and, and like, analyze their actual beliefs, uh, it's very difficult to say exactly what they are. I mean, the D&D, Bahamut, and Tiamat are just wholly cribbed and, and not, like, intended to be um, taken as accurate mythological elements, so. There's the red curved slopes. If there's breakfast soup, then sea dragons are my cousins. I mean, they're they're my cousins in the same way that they're your cousins, too. Just like all fish are your cousins. Very distantly related cousins. But still cousins. You're not a dragon, it doesn't matter. All tetrapods are descended from uh, lobe-finned fishes. Which, I will note, dragons are not technically tetrapods. We're hexapods. So maybe we're not actually uh, related. As closely, I should say. Actually, not sure uh, where in the fish family tree um, seahorses fall. First one is a bunny with a carrot. Yes, yes, it's nibbling at the carrot, very much like me lately. I I have had to give up my crackers uh, for something healthier, and I have chosen uh, carrots. Technically, humans share about 70% DNA with a uh, banana, if your understanding of the science thing is correct. It should hug the Lego dragon. I mean, it, it, would, it would like that. Uh, it's a very friendly bunny, and it's a very friendly Lego dragon, so, you know, getting hugs from bunnies are fantastic. Everyone should get a hug from a bunny. You will eat a chicken and a biscuit, crackers, in my honor. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Just rubbing it in. Rubbing it in. <laughs> Carrots are actually not something bunnies should be eating constantly. It's fine. They, they, they wouldn't out in the wild anyway because they'd have to dig them up. They'd actually, uh, um, I think they'd prefer the, uh, the greens part anyway, so. Exactly like what that bunny is doing. I don't think it would, um, but I mean, I suppose I could try that. I like, I like fresh raw carrots better than, like, cooked carrots, for example, so I'm not sure how much I would like, uh, carrot chips. Lots and lots of clover. Yep, they do like that, too. But not crimson and clover, over and over. Not even sure if I got that reference correct. Next thing I know, I'll be drinking carrot juice. Oh, no, 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 no. Besides, I'm pretty sure they add a lot of sugar to those things. 
I did get some zero sugar uh, root beer that I'm going to try out, see how good that is. Gives all the carrot flavored soda. Ew. <laughs> I think that, sound, that sounds gross. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't love carrots. I just like them better than most other snack foods that I could eat instead. Miss my crackers, though. Now all this synonymous with carrots. Well, poop. Technically, there's ranch-flavored soda. Ew. Ew. Like, why would anyone have that? Ranch isn't even good. <laughs> well, I do have carrots and pasta. Like garlic pasta. But again, like, I shouldn't be eating that much, <laughs> that much uh, in the way of pasta either, so... Oh, I have to cut out a staple of my diet. It's very sad. I mean, you can love ranch. There's nothing wrong with loving bad things. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, so it's not about not eating things anymore. I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm very much exaggerating here. Um, it's just more of a try to cut back on the things. And I was eating a lot of carrots, and I was drinking a lot of soda. Not as much as other people I, that I know who do not have these problems, but. Just have to focus on the meat, dairy, and candy food groups now, yes. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, candy does have a lot of sugar. It's sugar that's the problem. Curse you, taste! Doctor didn't say anything about salt, though, so I'm good there. Just eat more salt. I mean, a big part of it is is just kind of like playing it by ear. Uh, I will see how I I am next time I uh, get some tests done. See where I am. See if I need to cut back even more than I already have. Pretzels or carbs? I can eat carbs. I just can't eat a lot of carbs, and that's what you do when you eat crackers and stuff all the time, which is kind of what I was doing. Nonsense, it's at the top of the food pyramid. That means it's the best. The golden cap. Well, I can't argue with that. I mean, I'm still eating sandwiches, which is also carbs and bread, but I'm just uh, trying to cut back. And part of it is, like, cut some things out so I can still eat the other things. Like, like sandwiches. Potatoes have carbs, too! <laughs> See, now, now, you're, now you're discovering my issue here. It's like, all the good stuff has carbs. Dragon suffering from self-restraint. I know. But they're in the salad, so that offsets that. But yeah, so basically I'll see how... Uh how things shake out next time I uh, get a blood test uh, and uh, see where things stand. 
How about a cheese salad? I mean, I, I have been eating more salads, and yes, there is cheese in them. <laughs> and chicken, and bacon. But no dressing. Again, like I said, it's all about... Uh, Trying to cut back where I can and still eat the things that I want to eat. We'll see how that goes. It does suck, though. Cheese slices, hunks rather than cheese shreddings? Why? Well, well, I, I like the shredded cheese, though. Chicken Caesar salads are great. I mean, I don't know that, that the salad that I make is exactly a thing. Good thing nacho cheese sauce isn't a carb, possibly. <laughs> but the nachos are. Oh, I'm sure, like, I mean, there's all kinds of added stuff. Again, it's just about trying to cut back on things. I need to cut back on the uh, the carbs, not cut out the carbs. I did say cut out the carbs a while back when uh, you first told me, but I was I was being a little I was like, exaggerating for emphasis, shall we say? State that all the stores here, there don't have salad bars anymore thanks to the pandemic. That is a shame. Balance in everything. Most every, everything. Except sour jelly beans and Jolly Ranchers. Mm -hmm. Fruit actually has a lot of uh, sugars. So no, I'm not eating fruit. Not a big fan of fruit, for the most part. It's still sugar. <laughs> it's still carbs. Might not be as bad, but... Uh... Again, like, I could also switch to um, less refined uh, carbs as well, but that stuff doesn't taste good. <laughs> Right, but I would rather eat some uh, refined sugars uh, and enjoy what I'm I'm eating quite a lot, rather than eat a lot more unrefined sugar that I don't enjoy as much. And we get the uh, unicorn's horn here. Does that mean Alden has to throw out the chocolate cake in Stardew Valley? No. I love lemonade. I do not like lemons. I could not eat a lemon. I think we've reached the point in chat where folks are just throwing out random foods. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that oftentimes happens. Again... If I was looking for help, I would ask. I'm not saying, you know, I, I don't, I don't mind this. I'm just saying that I, I am, got a handle of it, uh, on it as well as I can for the moment. So, and it's not like one of those things where it's like you got to do this or you're gonna have uh, diabetes in six months. It's not even that. So, 
I probably could have gone quite a bit longer without it, but... You used to eat lemons? Yeah. You're not tormenting me. It's not tormenting. Alright, so here is our uh, magical unicorn with a rainbow-colored tail and mane. Very, very cute. Very, very cute. Lots of extra pieces. We've got uh, a spare alicorn in gold. Uh, one by one cylinder plate in white. One by one plate in blue. One by one tile slopes in white, teal, and dark pink. One by one quarter cylinder tiles in uh, medium azure and uh, bright orange. One by two half cylinder tiles in white and gray. And a white one by one tile with round ends. We go. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, instructions for the ducky. At least I assume it's a duck. It does have a very big tail, so maybe it's uh, something else. Actually, let me go ahead and switch on over to that one. I still have other things that I'm going to build, so no ducky. It's something for you to build yourself. Or no seahorse, I should say. Sorry. Turkey? Peacock? I mean, maybe it's something like that. I don't know. It's very weird. I don't think it's a peacock. I suppose it could be a turkey. Magical turkey. And the seahorse, which... Uh, maybe it's more like a sea unicorn, because it does have a, uh, a horn there. There's the, uh, the body. It's got a rainbow belly. This is very cute. Little rainbow bits on the, uh, on the fins as well. A seahorse or a peacock. Okay, it is a peacock. Huh. Go figure. All right. The seahorse is very cute. It's only like ten bucks too. I mean, it's a pretty good set for uh, for ten bucks. Has a lot of good pieces, lots of colorful pieces. You know, down here on the base as well. It can lift its tail. Peacocks are perhaps your favorite birds. Oh, okay, that's nice. There is a really big Lego peacock that I have been considering. So maybe I will uh, we'll get something like that. Hey, and well, Bunny, if Lego ever does a Creator 3-in-1 big seahorse... Uh, actually, you know what? Before we do that set, it is about time we could do some uh, minifigs. Uh, India blue or Java green? Uh, it's kind of teal, so probably Java green. I don't know. All right, where are my minifigs? There we go. Let's get my sheets out. There we go. There is, I think, just one left that we are looking for here. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Howdy, Shield of Hope. How's it going? So two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, so D12. Bahamut doesn't have a four on him. He only has Mega Flare. All right, so three. One, two, three. And Bahamut is a Mega Flare-sided uh, die. 
How do you guys not know this? All right, let's go ahead and start a prediction. Can all guess what is inside the minifig pack? Let's go. So we are only missing a president business with his golf club. It's the only one that we have not gotten. Um, Bahamut got a 15. That would be the uh, the kitty singer. Minotaur pupper rescue operator. Okay, I got a 14. That would be Rex. Rex start Eskimo spy. All right, get your predictions in. Can I guess what is inside the minifig pack? Oops, that's the wrong one. Let's go over here. A centaur summoner who summons goblins. But but it's random what you summon. You know, unless you develop a specific spell for it. All right, about 50 seconds to go. Get your predictions in. Who taught Bahamut Roulette? Who's going to get the death effect? Well, not me. I'm, I'm immune to it. Wink. Learning Roulette in Final Fantasy Tactics Advance is annoying. It really is. But yeah, so I missed out on the uh, the goblin. What I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to see about uh, um, either making one of the um, uh, missions uh, that a goblin showed up in um, as repeatable and do that. I think that would I, I would rather do that than like edit an existing fight and put a goblin in, I think that would be easier. India Blue and Java Green are the two main uh, peafowl breeds, with mutations like black-shouldered pied and white bean things that add majesty to the species. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I, I know about them vaguely, but I don't know enough about uh, peacocks to know which one has... Uh, like, which one the Lego one is. It's mostly teal colored, so I would guess the green one. Remember getting lucky with roulette on one run, then giving up on the next one? <laughs> now I was trying for roulette and um, like not not trying real hard. Um, it wiped out two of the people who did not, were not blue mages. I think I had three blue mages and three other p characters in the fight. Um, it wiped out um, the uh, two of the non-blue mage people and then wiped itself out, so. <laughs> okay, so. Let's see, our timer is, our uh, predictions are closed. Let me go ahead and get my timer up. Odds are it's India blue, right? But but my point is is that it's it's teal, not blue. So I I don't know, I don't know. All right, and go. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Okay, that is a very interesting piece. Okay, fifteen point five. I think, I think we did get President Business. Take it up with hair. I'm, I know about that. I mean, <laughs> although the D and D Argos is better than the uh, Greek Argos. All right, we did get President Business. That is going to be the last one from this set. Okay. I am I am kind of surprised that we were able to get them all so quickly. The uh, blue mage in FF11 sounds like a pain to utilize because of learning a specific blue spell. There we go. Get his uh hair on there. And his silver golf club. There we 
There we go. And he does have an alternate uh, face. Very big unibrow. I do like his, uh, his outfit. That is a fun outfit. And the golf club is cool, too. But do they scream as as, uh, as much as goats do? But yeah, um, there there's uh, that is that is common in like some of the, you know, like kind of uh, um, earlier horror stuff about, you know, is it is it a person screaming or is it a peacock screaming kind of thing? All right, so next up we got uh, series eleven, so. That does wrap us up with the uh, LEGO Movie 2 uh, set. So we'll have to see about uh, what we will be doing on Friday. All right, but first, we've got a green one. Oh, actually, I, I need to uh, choose the prediction. I forgot to do that. So we were within 20 seconds, so let me uh, complete that prediction. And who is getting the hams? Kinshir. Kinshir is getting all the hams with just a tiny, tiny wager. Nice. Lord Canis going for uh, 20 to 50. Shield of Hope and Ice Sovereign going for 50 to 60. And uh, Bahamut and Lelbunny going for no. Reminded you of a riff from a movie where they discuss that? Something about being scared that the uh, film broke? Um, the... Uh, Movie that I know of, um, MST3K, The Screaming Skull. That specifically has some peacocks and um, the gaslighting villain was using them to make a uh, his new wife think that she's crazy. All right. Okay, number one. The Larch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Six, okay, now we need a twenty. All right, seventeen. Seventeen. All right. All right. Let's start a new prediction. Can all guess what is inside the minifig pack? All right. So far, we have gotten the scarecrow. We have gotten the Blacktron robot, and I think that is it. Ends up with a six. So that would be the gingerbread man. I got a four, so that would be another uh, robot. Minotaur bunny sanctuary operator. You know, for all those poor little bunnies abandoned after Easter. A centaur version of Gal. All right, get your predictions in. Can I guess what is inside the minifig pack? There's pretty fun ones in this one, too. Nice reference to the Islanders. A female robot based on the uh, other robot that we had. I think we had? Did we get that one? I actually can't remember if we've had that one yet. No, we haven't. It's from Series 6. Which is the one that Lel Bunny wants me to open. Alright, 30 seconds remaining. Get your predictions in. Get my timer reset. We're all ready to go.
I did not say that. I did not say that. Okay, predictions are just about closed. And... There they go. All right. So let me go ahead and get my timer ready. And go. All right, let's see. What do we have? What do we have? There's a headpiece, hairpiece, something like that. What kind of part is that? Can't really tell. All right, what else do I have? What else do I have? Hmm, what is that? Is that... Oh, all right. All right, 36.86. Uh, we have the uh, the cat lady. The grandmother with, uh, with the kitty. Yeah, it, it still can, yes. In fact, let's see. It's under four. I have a total of... 11 sets here. So we've got, we got plenty, plenty of minifigs to go. All right. So that was... 36.86... Choose that prediction. Well, that is going to all go to the people who uh, put the most down. So let's see how that shakes out. All right, Lord Canis and K Ice Oven getting uh, all of the hams. Lord Canis earned a grand total of 46. That is uh, that's not a lot of hams. Uh, Kinshir in with uh, within 20. No one went for 50 to 60. And Bahamut and Lel Bunny went for no. Yeah, there were, there were not a whole lot of uh, hams on, on that one. Uh, Lel Bunny, you repeat yourself. There we go. Kitty wants to sit. Kitty's a little too big to sits, but Kitty doesn't care. Kitty sits. Very cute sweater has a uh, has a a kitty motif on it, which is pretty fantastic. No printing on the back. Uh, I don't know if I have a gray cat. So that's very nice. Look at his cute little face. Look at him. Isn't he cute? So cute. Such a cute kitty. <laughs> no, well, funny. That was that was a joke on uh, Mean and Dragon being uh, synonyms. <laughs> All right, so we got uh, we got the cr the cat lady. There we go. All right. So that means next up we have series twenty five, and the uh, the new series is coming out pretty soon. In fact, um, they should be out in stores today. Uh, I haven't gotten to a store, so I haven't picked up any any of them yet. But I do need to. Uh, so let's go for a D6 to see which one we're pulling from. So that's a three. We're pulling from the top. Oh, there's six of them. All right, that is a six. There we go. All right, let's get our scale out and ready. 
I did not get the sheet out. Oops. There we go. All right, let's start the prediction. Can all guess what is inside the minifig box? Let's go. So 10 would be the um, train kid, which uh, there are no more train kids. I also got a 10, so I need to reroll. I got an 11, that would be the uh, Barbarian. And it can definitely be the Barbarian. Uh, four, that would be the, um, the Sprinter. I'm not sure if there are any more Sprinters on the bottom. So it's up to you if you want to uh, re-roll. Re a Minotaur Disciplinarian, because all needs a spanking. Spanking's bad. You know, unless you're into that, which... Don't care. But you don't do that to people unless they ask. They want it. Now, don't hit kids. All right, 40 seconds to go. Get your predictions in. It's going to be a half-dragon centaur. That that raises some very questionable biological questions. 20 seconds to go. Get your predictions in. Can I guess what is inside the minifig box? I should also pull up that sheet. Probably be a good idea. Okay. All right, predictions are closed, so let me go ahead and shake it. All right, there's definitely some large pieces. I'm going to go with uh, basil. I'm going to go with basil. I think uh, it's basil in there. Looks back into chat. Eyes narrow goes back out of chat. All right, 17.7. So that's definitely not basil. It's probably not the barbarian lady. Probably too high for the gamer. I guess the exercise lady? I'm going to say that the await says exercise lady. But let me go ahead and scan it. Come on. Switch over to the other camera, please. Come on. There we go. Okay, that's saying the harpy. Weird. 17.71. That's close to that. That says 18.04. It's not that. It's that it's, um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it needs to switch over to the right camera. It doesn't have, like, when it's um, using that, it doesn't automatically uh, focus. So it just needs to switch to a different camera. And I don't know how to get it to do that since it's just a website pulling the, um, the information up. Yep, that is a harpy. All right. Well, that would be the last harpy. Um, and I think we had harpies on the top layer. 
So that is, uh, that is very, very odd. I guess that does mean that we can have, uh, Harpy, I mean, we can have them on the top and bottom, so... I don't know. Alright, so... Choose a prediction. Choose the outcome. That is gonna be a no. Complete the prediction. Alright, Bahamut getting all of the hams, basically doubling his, uh, his ham count. Shield of Hope and Kinshir going for yes with a guess. Ice Sovereign Little Bunny and Lord Canis going with, going for yes with weight. And that is it. Alright. That was a pretty huge haul, yeah. It was a pretty huge haul. Very nice. Go ahead and mark down that we have the uh, third one of the Harpy. So there should be no more Harpies. You're expecting not to win there? This is one where I think that a no bet is actually uh, pretty safe. Um, because the this weight guide that I'm using has been consistently wrong. Like, consistently off on... Uh... What weights it's getting. Like, it says 18.04, and the website that I had... Um... Does not list those weights at all, so... So I think that no is a much more uh, likely situation. The yes with the guess is the equivalent of no on the others. Because the likelihood that I get it correct with the guess is pretty low. Because I'm doing it simply by sound. And that is, that is not a reliable method of, uh, of choosing. It really is not. I might put in a yes with scam, and then the uh, no would be very unlikely. Again. All right. There we go. We'll uh, go ahead and start next on our space shuttle. Let me go ahead and close that one out. There we go. So we've got the space shuttle. You can also build an astronaut and a um, just kind of like a fighter craft. It's interesting how often space shuttles show up as uh, toys and stuff like that compared to, like, Apollo, you know? All right, Bombit, have a good rest of your night. Thank you very much for coming on out. A lot of white and black pieces in this one. Understandably so. Alright, let's put uh, large plates aside. Alright, one, uh, two by three. And side studs. And more side studs. Out of blue spaceship for a change for Benny? I mean, that's kind of what classic space sets were all about. I, I did do uh, the... Where is that? Two by two. I did do that Galaxy Explorer a while back. That was mostly blue. Yeah, classic space. Blue is a big, big color for the for classic space. Gray and blue are like the uh, two main colors. Gray for wings and a blue for the body, generally.
All right, where are the one by twos with top clips? There we go. There's one. And there's the second one. Like the Lego Movie 2 had uh, quite a few um, space-related things. There is actually a set that I might get from that, um, which had multiple uh, classic space figures, including a pink one, and I kind of want that. I'm not sure how expensive it is, but I'll have to look. All right, get some uh, white 2x3s here on the sides. Black and white curved slopes. You take a blue Minotaur too. <laughs> It would be nice if LEGO made a mythology theme. It'd be really, really cool. Alright, one by two tile slope. Where are you? They did, and I'm unhappy with the Purple Harpy. I mean, I'm unhappy with the Purple Harpy because uh, I don't think Harpies should be purple as a standard Harpy shade. Howdy, Tazer, and how's it going? I'd, I'd rather have a, uh, a brown Harpy. Tired? Eyes hurt? Oh no. I hope you can get some good rest then. Any reason for the eyes hurting or is it just like long day kind of thing? Whoops, that's a one by two tile. You enjoy whimsical hues? I mean, I do too, but... Like, I, I would prefer it to be a whimsical harpy rather than a harpy in such a situation kind of thing. If that makes sense. But part of my uh, interest is also in, you know, like, using this for... D&D type uh, display or something like that, and a purple harpy does not fit my view of D&D harpies, so it doesn't fit my view of classical mythology harpies. I got no problem with a harpy being blue in and of itself, unless it's kind of like, you know, going for a classical harpy, which they're not indicating it's supposed to be anything other than that. How can a harpy be more whimsical? No parrot harpies, no. I mean, again, like... Within certain contexts, like... A Disney movie? Sure. Friends? The Friends sets? Sure. But 
But those are like, you know, specific kind of, uh, different, what's the word I'm, I'm looking for? Um, Uh, it's already kind of setting it, itself up to be different there. If that makes sense. I mean, I don't dislike the, uh, um, you know, the purple. It just, I would have rather had brown for it to be of use to me. All right, Mad Martin, have a good rest of your night. Thank you very much for coming on out. Enjoy your lithid noises, because I know you do. So you want something that has some expectations because of what a general theme is. Kind of. I mean... Like, if you're, if you're presenting something as... Like, out of a... Out of mythology, then... I don't think the ancient Greeks would have made purple harpies. If that makes sense. I don't think they envisioned them as purple. I think they would have envisioned them as, as brown, because that's what female bird colors tend to be. Right, so Lord Canis, like, for example, if, if you were, if it was a harpy, you know, if, well, in D&D, &D, if uh, the... Spelljammer group goes to um, uh, fairy space, and they encounter a purple harpy, I'm not going to look in, you know, I'm not going to be like, that's not right, or something like that, you know? But in the Forgotten Realms, or Greyhawk, yeah, that's going to feel a little bit out of place to me. All right, purple is not a common creature color. Put the uh, shuttle over there while I do that. It's like why I don't like Aarakocra that look like um, blue jays, because that's not an Aarakocra. There can be other avian humanoids like that, but that's not an Aarakocra. It's like, again... Uh, making your human perfectly normal human in every respect, and you're calling it a human, you're not calling it some other race, but it's uh, a, you know, anthropomorphic dog. Because it's a mammal. Like, Aarakocra were, were set out, you know, when they were created uh, for the game, they have a, a specific appearance, and that is that is their appearance. They're supposed to be um, look like that because that is that is what they look like. Um, and to then just make like anything go feels like then you're just saying that Aarakocra is a type of creature as opposed to a specific species. Greek harpies aren't beloved creatures. Oh, no, I know. Like, I don't need my, uh, my fantasy to follow all the rules of science and things like that, but I do want my creatures to be discrete species, if that makes sense.
you know, and you could use stats for Aarakocra as this other, you know, race of avian humanoids. That's, you know, nothing wrong with that. Stats are just stats. That kind of thing doesn't really matter. But call them something else, you know? I desire consistency in storytelling. Yes, that's a good way of, uh, of putting it. And a consistency in the universe, too. Like, I want it to feel like a real world that just has different rules. Yeah, it's a really good way of putting it. I'll, uh, I will probably, uh, will probably use that in the future. Using Eric Coker stats for a uh, Terran analog, uh, but as a way of saying that if events happen here as they did in other worlds, then they might evolve into Eric Coker. Well, I mean. I why not just make them an entire, you know, their own thing? There's nothing wrong with using the stats for simplicity's sake. Like, not everything has to come up, you know, has to have new stats all the time kind of thing. Like, they can just be Terrans or whatever you want to call them. Um, and it's like, use the stats for Aarakocra because there's already a flying humanoid uh, creature that is of the appropriate size, that's perfectly fine. So the Warhammer method? I don't know. I don't have... I don't... I never really got into Warhammer. Actually, I don't know if that's going to go there. That is going to go there. Like, the, the Spelljammer... original Spelljammer box set um, recommends that Dungeon Masters do, as, as in its example, create blue orcs. Um, the idea isn't that the orcs are blue, but you're encountering a, a blue-skinned humanoid named something else entirely. Um, the players are like, I, we have no idea what these things are. I, what, what, you know, what are they going to uh, do to us? We gotta, we gotta be careful. Uh, we don't know what their capabilities are, but the Dungeon Master is just using the Orc stats because you don't need to use something different. Like, they're not literally blue Orcs, they're something else entirely unrelated to Orcs. The Dungeon Master is just using the stats. Perfectly fine with that. There's nothing wrong with that, in my, in my view. But if a fantasy world has set out that orcs never have blue skin, then orcs don't have blue skin kind of thing. It just, it rubs me the wrong way. All right. So, spare parts. We've got a two one-by-one -one tile slopes in white and trans uh, black. Although, I think they call this trans brown now, because there is a new uh, trans black. Um, one by one tiles in dark blue and red. Gray one by one cylinder tiles uh, with top peg and a white one by one plate. Alright, so here is our space shuttle. I think the uh, the windows could be a little bit bigger, but I do like that for its small size. It has a, a nice little, you know, bay doors that open up. It's got the Canada arm. You can even clip it, clip the satellite to it, fold out the uh, the panels. That's pretty cool. I like that got the engines in the back. It's a very cool, 
for uh, for its size. And actually, like, one thing that would be really fun would be to make the external tank and the boosters um, of the equivalent size. Just so we're clear, should the party know the stats of the enemies? No. No, they should not. In a tabletop game. There's a difference in a um, in a computerized game. Since you can just reload anyway in a, a computerized game, anytime you fail, um, there, you know, players can get the information that they need, kind of thing, um, just by playing. But. You can make it easier for them uh, to get it. I mean, obviously, there's nothing wrong with uh, hiding that either um, and making it mysterious and stuff like that so players don't know how uh, how good or bad they're doing in the fight until they win. Um, it's all design choices, but, you know, you can count out the damage and, and figure out exactly how many uh, hit points an enemy has, so it's kind of moot kind of thing. Anyway, we still have some time, so I do have some poly bags uh, to do. I had ordered something a while back, and um, the place that I ordered from forgot to send it to me. So when I contacted them back and was like, hey, since uh, you didn't send this to me and it's now sold out, can you just refund it to me? Um, and the person uh, there was like, oh, no wonder we have one extra. So they actually sent me four poly bags as well, and some other things. Like, really, really generous. Uh, oh, also, before we do that, I should probably look at the uh, instructions for the other ones. So, like, not big things, but still, still pretty nice. So we got a little uh, astronaut. Yeah, I was I was uh, highly amused by the uh, by the comment. I was like, "Oh, no wonder we have an extra of that." <laughs> so they sent it out. They sent me um, the poly bags. They sent me some um, Marvel minifigs that I haven't opened yet. Uh, I'm going to open those eventually. Let's see. Kind of reminds me of Asimo, the robot here. I like the backpack, though. Although it's it's got thrusters on it, which is a little bit weird. And then a, uh, a moon flag. It's kind of neat. And then the uh, kind of space fighter thing. Nothing too fancy with its uh, design, but having the, the this in the back angle down and the um, transparent pieces there is kind of neat. <laughs> you got a clip of that, nice. Yeah, the other wing is just the same. It's actually really neat. I like the, uh, it's, it's a nice little, uh, kind of space fighter craft. It's pretty cool. This is a good one. Uh, I, I would definitely recommend this, uh, the set. Uh, a little $10 set, if I remember correctly. So, pretty cool for, uh, space fans. Alright, so, let's go ahead and start out. I have, uh, Hermione's study desk here. I didn't get the uh, instruction sheets downloaded for this, but it's fine. Not very big uh, sheets anyway. Do you have another book that will uh, 
work well for a, you know, it, it'll fit in with the uh, the D&D books that we got. Let's see if the camera will focus. Come on, camera. There we go. Little plant in that book. Comes with one of these, uh, like, randomized decorative tiles of a character, I assume. I don't know who that's supposed to be. And then a letter tile. Yeah, we'll go with this uh, Hermione face. There we go. She uh, she accidentally forgot to return a library book, so now now she's going to be hit with the fines. It's the expression I get. I'm not going to take off the um, the wands just because I'm lazy right now. All right, Crimson, thank you very much for coming on out. Have a good rest of your night. Nice little uh, cross-shaped table. Exactly. And there's another um, printed letter there and, a, and an owl. There's a printed letter, the owl. And now for the table itself. Forgot to return a library book. She needs to look out for solace. Yep. All right, these go on the back there. There we go. Two by two tile there. Also, she needs to uh, worry about uh, Conan the Librarian as well. Because you've been playing so much Mass Effect lately, you can only think of uh, Moden Solace. <laughs> Well, it's actually Solas, A-S, not U-S. All right, and a little, uh, little study table with an inkwell. Very cool. I like it. All right, so spare parts, um, extra wand, uh, one by one cylinder tile in a clear with top peg, uh, one by one cylinder plate with underbar, one by one cylinder plates in uh, dark orange and black, and two spare white feathers. All right, so that is the first of the poly bags. Second one is also a Harry Potter set, Quidditch practice. That's all the pieces. Yes, yes, you uh, you fly on a broom. Big instruction sheet. So it's kind of going to be off screen a little bit. I have a lot of stuff on screen right now, on the uh, table right now. Uh, okay, there we go. All right, you know what? Actually, let's see if I can put this uh, back up there. We'll leave that off camera. 
I suppose I should make the minifig first. And a dark brown Fabuland broom. So there we go. I think that's Cho. two tiles with center studs. Looks like there's a lot of uh, Lego news. Uh, I think the um, the Adventurer's Redux with uh, Johnny Thunder uh, is well, not really an adventurer's redux. Uh, it's just standard city sets. But I think the, uh, those got revealed. So a new Johnny Thunder. There's a red panda and a gorilla and a baby gorilla and a tiger. Very exciting. Okay, there's that. Then we get the 2x2... Uh, two with Peg. Okay, and so this is supposed to be high up in the air, so it's kind of like um, force perspective kind of thing. One by one peak slope. there. Black and yellow uh, making good Blacktron little uh, Blacktron uh, tent place thingy. It's clearly what it is. Not one of the, the houses. No, it's Blacktron, clearly. <laughs> And then red and yellow. Alright, then the rotating part. There we go. And the uh, golden snitch, which... It's actually kind of a neat piece. Uh, I have not gotten one of these before. If the camera would focus. All right, what if I put Hermione in there? Will that then get it to focus? There we go. So, pretty detailed little piece. It's very cool. Could make a, uh, a nice um, hood ornament on a, a car as well. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. Let's get that right on. There helps by actually you know what? Let's do it that way. <laughs> Need to get it in the hole. There we go. Helps to look at it from the top. So, and... 
can spin around on it. So it's like a forced perspective thing. The golden snitch is too big. A Lego minifig can't put that in its mouth. <laughs> so it's pretty neat for a little poly bag. And again, lots of uh, spare parts. So we got one by one plates in green, white, red, blue, yellow, and black. One by one cylinder plate with hollow stud in gold. One by one cylinder plate with bar in gold. And a one by one pyramid peak in uh, beige. There is that. It's got a, this nice little, uh, you know, play feature as well. That's pretty cool. Oh, don't worry. I got I got two more little poly bags that we're gonna we're gonna do. Just because I got them, might as well build them. They're tiny. It'll take just a few minutes to build. So we're not done yet. My my table is getting full though. there. Got our green wheels for our green skateboard. Are these the same shade? Yes, they are. All right. Nope, oh, that's a little girl head. So you can either give him blonde hair or the helmet. And since he's going to be on the uh, skateboard also, he can uh, wear a classic pirate's backpack. But he looks like it's almost perfect size for the dragon. It really isn't. It really isn't. Its, it's arms do not are not articulate. I like his uh, shirt with banana on it. Does have back printing on the shirt as well. She also has a classic pirate backpack. And an apple. Although, it's a red apple. I don't know why you'd give a kid a red apple. That's just cruel. Rather than a delicious green Granny Smith or Golden Delicious or something like that. A cute little outfit, too. I like her, her little hair buns. Alright. Let's make a little... Uh, playground for them to be uh, going to after school. So we got a little uh, merry-go-round type thing. Dark green right there. And we've got a little skate park here as well. Okay, brown one by four and dark gray one by four tile. Little frog sitting here. And a little fountain. Very tiny fountain. A 
And let's see, one orange and a two dark lavender flowers. There you go, get the flower right there. And dark pink caps on that. And then let's see. And a little street light. It's pretty cool. Like it's nothing nothing major, nothing fancy, but you can definitely like put it in a in a little Lego town and have a nice little uh layout. Um like it's not too big, it could easily fit into a little Lego town. Or just give you know, inspiration for making something a little bit larger. Yeah, it is a rather full scene, but it's 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 just kind of like intended to give you a sense of what's going on. So the spare parts, we have a trans light blue uh, candle flame piece. Uh, one by one plate flowers in dark lavender and a bright orange. A dark green one by one cylinder plate with hollow stud. And a green three leaf, a three stem plant piece. All right, one last one to do. Not quite as full, but it will fit with the uh, with that scene. Meant that as a good thing. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean it's it's like they they did a really good job of just like packing in a lot with uh, just a few pieces too. Nice dual molded uh, helmet with hair. There we go. Let's make her a scooter. And there's a little dog biscuit on the back of it. Actually, goes around that way. So I think these were originally made for the Friends line. But they do work for minifigs as well. So a pretty, pretty cute little scooter. I do like these. You know, kind of like one of the electric ones. And she's got her husky, husky pupper going along with her. Look at that little tail. Look at that curled tail. All right. Then a nice little, uh... A bit of greenery with some flowers. And turn that around. All right, three one by one cylinder bricks. Now, the animals tend to come and go, kind of thing, because just because, um, like, they have a lot now, so. There's a limit to how many they can actually, like, get in without just making the <laughs> animals uh, ever-present kind of thing. So we got a nice little tree and a little uh, butterfly up in the tree. Just a cute little simple tree. But, you know, I mean, it would go well, like, uh, put it right here. Or something. Very cool. Spare parts, we have a spare dog biscuit, one by one uh, cylinder tile, a bright uh, light blue uh, one by one uh, plate flower, and a pearl silver robot arm. The kitty and her uh, lady could go there as well. Indeed, indeed. Yep. 
She can go to the park and uh, pet the doggy while uh, her kitty sits, attempts to sit in her uh, basket. Howdy, young boogers. How's it going? Unfortunately, we are just at the end. And a couple poly bags uh, to wrap things up with, so uh, the table is very, very, very busy. <laughs> Go ahead and fold these back up. But uh, that is going to uh, wrap us up for tonight. Uh, we will be back on Friday for some more Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster. Uh, we will be back on Friday night to continue our D&D building. Uh, the D&D set is still back there, yes. It's right back there. I don't have anywhere else to put it, so... Um, like, it, it's nice that there, there is space back there for sets that are too big for, uh, you know, like, that I, I'm continuing on and, and I can put back there when I get to a Wednesday, so. Uh, but uh, this is going to wrap us up for tonight. When we come back next time, uh, we will uh, be building something else next Wednesday. So I want to thank you guys for coming on out, and I shall see you next time. See you then, everyone.